In this video, I'm just going to show you how to build a uh, GeoGebra file that will help us explore quadratics. So the first thing we're going to do is just have a blank GeoGebra page open. I'm going to sl click on the slider tool. And when I do that, I'm just going to click somewhere on the page. And it opens up the settings for you right away. You can change the name if you want. I want mine to be called A, so this is good. You can change the max, the min, the increment. Um, I think all of these are fine for now. We can go back and adjust them later if we need. So I'll say apply. And then I'm still on that tool, so I'm just going to click again, hit enter, click again, hit enter. So now I've got a slider for A, B, and C. And this is a little bit high, so I'm going to move over to the move tool. And I'm going to try to just see if I can select all these and move them down a little bit. There we go. So now, after we've got that, uh, we've got sliders for A, B, and C. We want to graph something. So I'm going to graph, I'm going to say A. And in GeoGebra, you need to put a space or a multiplication symbol. So A, X probably won't work. So A space, X to the second plus B space, X plus C. And I get the graph. So this is right now graphing. Uh, if you look in the algebra view, you can see the function f of x equals x squared plus x plus 1. That's what's being graphed. If you, again, you're on the move tool, you can vary a. It updates. You can see in the algebra view that the function is being updated. You can see the graph is also being updated as you move or as you change one of the parameters. Um, I think I'd like to have this... Uh, capture or the uh, label here be a little more descriptive. So I'm going to right click on the graph and I'm going to come down to object properties. And if you look here, it says show label. You can turn the label on and off. But I think I just want to change the name. So if you look here, you can actually select from name and value, value and caption. So you can try. Um, the name and value if you like and so now it's it's showing you um, with the parameters that are currently set in here so you can see the coefficients um, so that should be fine so I'll say OK so now I've got a little more information on my label the next thing that I want to do is actually uh, plot the zeros of this function and for our exploration, we want to look at both the, uh, the real and then the non-real complex roots. <coughs> so we're going to do a little bit more work than we might have to do otherwise. So GeoGebra will actually help us find these roots really easily, but I'm going to do it manually so that we can apply it to the complex roots as well. So what we want to do is go to View and then Spreadsheet View. We should get a spreadsheet over here on the right side. And I sort of get a little bit crowded here with the spreadsheet, the graphing view, and the algebra view. And I don't really need to see the algebra view right now, so I'm going to close that. I've got a little more space. And then I'm going to work on my spreadsheet over here. And I'm just going to put some labels in here to help organize myself. So I'm going to, I want to pay attention to discriminant, and then I'm going to have root, so I'm going to say root 1 and root 2 and then I'm going to call these my complex roots, so complex root 1 and complex root 2. So in B1 I'm going to enter this the discriminant, so just like in Excel in this spreadsheet you've got to start with equals, so we're going to say equals and then I want to calculate B squared minus 4 and then it's AC but you have to use spaces for multiplication so space A space C I think that should work and I'm actually not sure if you have to put the equal sign in but either way we've got this up here now so there's the discriminant and then um, I'm gonna do this in parts here and I think that'll help with the exploration so in this instead of just calculating the root here. I'm going to calculate the root in parts. So I'm going to just put some labels up here. So I'm going to put in uh, in quotes I'm going to say 
um, opposite of b divided by 2a and this is just going to display that information for me so I remember what's in these cells and then over here I'm going to do um, again I'm just going to put it in quotes so that it's just going to be text and I'm going to put in uh, the square root of b squared minus 4ac and those quotes and again it's just so I can see what I'm looking at and now what I want to do is take and calculate the opposite of b over 2a so I'm going to do equals opposite of b divided by parentheses 2 space a close the parentheses enter and I've got this first piece here and this one should be the exact same thing so I'm just going to copy that and paste it and I want to make sure that that actually works sometimes the spreadsheet does some things that are a little weird so I'm going to move over to my algebra or the graphing page here I'm going to vary and make sure all that stuff updates and that looks good so then over here I'm going to have um, Oh, and I probably should have labeled this a little better, so I'm going to go back up in here. It's not going to look very nice, but help me remember what I'm doing. So this is either going to be the positive or the negative version of this. So I'm just going to say plus or minus. So up here I'm going to put plus the square root. So I'm going to, I'm going to do the calculation here. So it's going to be equals the square root of, and then I already have the discriminant, so it's going to be B1. I've got the square root of b of the discriminant, and then all I need to do is divide that by 2 space a, make sure that's in parentheses. And of course, right now my discriminant is negative, which is an indication that something's wrong. So let's check and see what I did wrong here. Oh, yeah. So I didn't have a square here. That's b squared. That should be better now. So now I've got uh, a positive discriminant, and I have some uh, a graph here that indicates I've got two real roots. <clears throat> and then I want the same thing that I have here, except for the opposite. So I'm going to say equals the opposite of c4. And then I can check again. Again, when I have a discriminant that's negative, this just goes blank, which is fine. So now I want to show how to plot these two roots. Let's plot these two real roots. Um, and again, this is going to be a little bit more complicated than it needs to be, but I think it will help us when we do the complex and sort of use the same setup. So now I want to plot uh, b4 plus c4 comma 0. So all I have to do is move over into the input bar and I'm going to say b4 plus c4 comma 0, close the parentheses, enter and point shows up and it sure looks like it's where it should be. I can very see and watch and make sure it updates. That looks good. So we want to plot the second root so we'll say, uh, parenthesis, we'll say b5 plus c5 comma 0, close the parenthesis, enter, and we get our second point. <clears throat> if we want, we can change those to make them a little more visible. So I'll go to Object Properties, and if you go to Style, I think it's under here, you can change the point size, so I'll change that to 5, and I'll do the same for this point, so right-click, Object Properties, Style, change the point size, and then it makes it a little easier to see those. So now we can watch what happens as we very see. We can observe the location of the roots. And the question on the worksheet asks about, uh, you know, to describe the motion 
or describe the yeah let's describe the motion of these two roots and I think it asks you something to uh, comment specifically about the symmetry that you observe. So what I want to know is what happens as we move this up. As we move this up we don't have any more real roots but we still have roots. So I want to come back over here into the spreadsheet page and try to find the complex roots. So here <clears throat> if we think about the quadratic formula again we're going to have the opposite of b over 2a here, just like we did here. So I'm just going to copy these two down to here. I'm going to verify make sure those stay live. Yeah. Uh, there we go. That looks good. And then here, I'm going to do basically what I have here, except... Oh, that's not what I wanted to happen. So I'm just going to type this in again. So I'm going to say equals, I want the positive square root of the opposite of the discriminant. And then I need to divide that by 2 space A. And then I'm going to copy that and paste it down here. And that doesn't seem to be doing what I want it to do. Ah, okay. So that's okay. I can just update it now. So this needs to be B1, and I need this to be the opposite of the square root, or the negative square root. And again, this doesn't do anything right now because my discriminant is positive, so the opposite of the discriminant is going to be uh, negative, so there, there's, no, there's not a real value for the square root. But by setting this up this way now, when I have a discriminant that's negative, I get this is the coefficient for the, uh, the imaginary part of my complex root. So what I can do is now is I'm going to imagine this graph over here. Instead of just being the x-axis and y-axis, I'm going to at the same time think of them as the real and the imaginary axis. So I'm going to plot my two roots now. So the way we're going to do that is we'll say if we take B9, that's our real part, our imaginary part is stored in C9, and then enter. And so there's one, and then we'll do it again, and this time it's going to be C10, so C10, comma, oh, no, B10, so B10, comma, C10, and there's my other complex root, and same thing, if we want to change the size, we can go to Object Properties, Style, change those to thicker points, right click, Style, Point Size, Set. Now we can very C, and we can watch what's happening to the real roots, and then we can watch what happens when they become non-real. And we've got both representations, we've got the graphic and we've got the uh, spreadsheet here helping us see what's going on. And I think that's everything that you need for this exploration after you've got this all set up. Enjoy your exploration.